Before antibiotics became a household word, war was a breeding ground for infection, and infection was often deadlier than the bullet itself. Imagine being a medic in 1942, deep in a muddy trench, your comrade's leg torn open, the wound already darkening with bacteria. No penicillin, no modern antiseptics, just raw instinct, field experience, and the wisdom of nature. That's what those medics had to work with. In those desperate hours, soldiers didn't rely on pharmaceuticals. They relied on earth. Soil poultices, herbal tinctures, and natural antiseptics were the lifeline of countless men. What's fascinating is that some of these forgotten wartime remedies are now backed by modern science. Today, we're uncovering one of those lost formulas, built from vinegar, salt, and battlefield herbs that served as a natural disinfectant long before penicillin hit the front lines. And by the end of this video, you'll not only understand the science behind it, but you'll also know exactly how to recreate it safely and effectively for yourself, using nothing but ingredients you can find in your kitchen or backyard. When World War II erupted, Penicillin existed, but it wasn't yet mass-produced. It wasn't until 1943 that it reached the front lines in large quantities. Before that, infections like gangrene, tetanus and sepsis could turn a minor wound into a death sentence. Medics had to act fast and improvise. They turned to methods refined from centuries of military field medicine. Techniques borrowed from World War I, the Crimean War, and even the Roman legions. They used what they called field antiseptics, crude but effective mixtures of vinegar, alcohol, salt and herbs with antimicrobial properties. The idea was simple. Starve the bacteria, dry the wound, and create an environment where infection couldn't thrive. It wasn't pretty, but it saved lives. All right, let's break down one of these field formulas, shall we? The base was usually vinegar, and that's because acetic acid is naturally antibacterial. Even at low concentrations, it disrupts bacterial cell walls and, well, it slows growth. To this, they added salt which wasn't just for cleaning, but also for drawing out moisture through osmosis, an ancient way to prevent rot and bacterial spread. Then came the herbs. When supply lines failed, medics used what grew locally. In Europe, it was thyme, rosemary or sage, plants loaded with compounds like thymol and rosmarinic acid, both powerful antiseptics. In the Pacific, soldiers might crush tea tree leaves or eucalyptus, which we now know contain terpinen, for ol, and cineol, two natural antibiotics in their own right. A typical poultice or wash might have been made like this. Vinegar diluted with clean water mixed with a handful of crushed herbs steeped briefly, then strained through cloth. Salt would be added last. The solution could be poured directly on wounds, soaked into bandages, or used to clean surgical tools. The goal was not comfort, it was control. Medics understood that even if the pain was unbearable, the treatment had to be harsher than the infection itself. What's remarkable is that, you know, decades later, science actually caught up with what those field doctors practice mostly by instinct. Acetic acid, which is the key component in vinegar, has now been proven to kill Pseudomonas aeruginosa, one of the most dangerous bacteria you'll find in burns and wounds. 
Salt, well, it remains one of the most accessible desiccants for infection control. And interestingly, the essential oils from thyme and sage continue to be studied as natural alternatives to synthetic antibiotics, showing a significant antimicrobial activity in laboratory tests. So, when those World War II medics reached for their makeshift vinegar wash, they really weren't just guessing. They were applying one of nature's oldest biochemical defences. They were, perhaps unknowingly, working with what we now call soil-based medicine, a term that's, you know, come full circle in today's research on probiotics, microbiomes, and all those natural healing compounds found in earth-derived substances. If you want to recreate a version of this lost formula for educational or emergency preparedness use, it's actually quite simple, but it must absolutely be done safely. Start with one cup of vinegar, either white or apple cider, and one cup of clean boiled water. Add one teaspoon of salt and stir until it's fully dissolved. Then crush and add a small handful of dried thyme and rosemary, or, if you happen to have them, tea tree leaves or eucalyptus leaves. Let the mixture steep for 10 to 15 minutes, and then, finally, strain it through a clean cloth. This can be used as a mild antiseptic wash for cleaning minor scrapes, insect bites, or even camp tools, though it's not a replacement for medical-grade disinfectants. Store it in a clean glass jar for short-term use. For field conditions, soaking a clean cloth in the mixture and applying it as a compress can help keep wounds clean until proper care is available. That's exactly the principle World War II medics relied on. Act immediately, clean thoroughly, and use natural barriers against infection when nothing else was available. For survivalists and field medics, this knowledge isn't just historical trivia. It's field craft. In remote conditions, when you're days away from modern supplies, understanding how to combine acidic, saline, and herbal agents can mean the difference between infection and recovery. If you're maintaining a preparedness kit, Include small sealed packets of salt, vinegar tablets, and dried antiseptic herbs. They take up almost no space, but their utility in first aid is unmatched. On a deeper level, this knowledge connects us with the fundamentals of survival science. It reminds us that nature's chemistry has always been the first pharmacy. Whether you're treating a wound in the wild, cleaning contaminated gear, or simply studying wartime medicine, this lost formula stands as a testament to human ingenuity under fire. WWWWWWI's medics didn't wait for miracles from the lab. They made their own in the dirt, the blood, and the chaos of the battlefield. Their hands, guided by instinct and necessity, rediscovered what healers had known for centuries, that the earth itself carries medicine if you know how to use it. If this glimpse into lost wartime healing sparked something in you, if you believe that survival means remembering what worked before science caught up, then subscribe to Warfield Survival. Share this video with a fellow history enthusiast or prepper, and let's keep these lessons alive. Because history isn't just something to study, it's something to use.